Hey guys, welcome to another video from the Parrot Bros. I'm Dom. I'm Rob. And today we are going to be doing brake pipes and we're also going to be fitting the pedal box. Now, usually, depending on, you sort of got two ways to go. You can either buy and fit a custom made, or can I say custom made, like generic race pedal set yeah. in like a pedal box, or you can reuse the existing Mazda ones. Now, you can do the Mazda ones, and it, again, it's perfectly fine, there's nothing wrong with it. The only thing is the pedals will be kind of fixed in a certain position. Whereas with a pedal box, you have the option to make the pedals closer together, wider apart. You can you tilt can them forwards, tilt them down. back, up and down. There's yeah. loads of adjustment. And when you have that smaller foot space, it's like the size of a shoe box in there. Um, you want as much adjustment as you can. Plus, it just it's a little bit better. They're about 350 quid. Yeah, I think so. I actually don't know how much they work, but... I'll put the price up on the screen yeah. for you. Uh, but they're not too bad. So we're going to be fitting that and we're going to be doing the pipe work. Now, um, basic wise, we've only got a few hand tools, which we'll show you in a minute. Um, we've got things like this, a little pipe hand bender, just to get nice radiuses, because this stuff can be a bit of a pain to get perfect. And if you don't do it right, and you've got to do, say, five bends, you do the first four fine, and then you mark the fifth one up, then you've, you've got to start again. So Mess the whole lot up. <laughs> so um, it's definitely worth trying to do it right first time. The best thing I can recommend, and which we've done and we'll show you in a minute, is uh, we kind of just had a few test bits, didn't we? Just yeah. to try and make off the ends. Um, Get to, because we've, we've upgraded for copper nickel. So uh, we that's bought, a, a lot yeah. harder to bend. It's a lot harder to bend, it's a lot tougher. So it is definitely harder to work with, but. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, I think. And there's also a little bit of a twist for this. Now, obviously, we're doing all our own brake lines, and towards the end, we'll tell you why you probably won't want to do them. But. We'll get into that in a bit. Let's jump into the intro. Okay, so here you have what we've got and what we're using. This is obviously the pedal box that we showed you. We've got three master cylinders. Now two are for the brakes, one front, one rear, with the reservoirs. And we've also got a sort of seal reservoir one for the clutch. Um, it comes with fittings. You normally get copper pipe, but we've opted for opted for copper nickel just because it's a little bit stronger and if anything's exposed and it gets hit by a stone when you're on a track there on the road it could compromise your brakes and that's really important not to it's not so much of an issue and you can cover them but we just thought for the extra 20 quid it's worth opting for that and then we've got our brake bias valve which allows you to adjust the brakes and get them dialed in just nice um, tool wise you don't need too much we've got a brake tool um, here which is we'll do a little video on later showing how to flare a brake line. Um, and then you'll just need a nice little, yeah, that, where's the cutter? You got yep, so we've got. Nice car, cut the quid from screw fix. Yep. Little bender, that's from screw fix as well, like 15 quid. That's just to get nice smooth radiuses on the pipe because the pipe can be a little bit hard to do. And if you've not done it before, that'll just help you get that nice little bend. Uh, right, so. The only other thing you will need is a drill and some drill bits. Cause obviously you're gonna rivet the uh, some P-clips to hold the uh, pipes in place. So just the drill uh, and some drill bits. Perfect, right, let's Shoot. jump into fitting. Let's get it. Okay, so this is a little hand tool. I mean, the tool was probably, what, a 10 or 15 quid? Was Something like that, off eBay. And there's not a lot to it, so lift, they can't see the sound, there you go. Um, <laughs> so the tool is very simple. Basically, this piece winds into the end here, and that gives you the distance you need to push the pipe in. Now, we got this wrong the first time, and mucked it up. So Rob will now demonstrate. Oh, kicking the camera. So you push the pipe in and it hits the stop. And then what you do is undo, do up, sorry, the two nuts on the fascia there till they're nice and tight so the, paper, the cable can't move. The cable? The cable, the, the pipe. The copper pipe. Yeah, you know what I mean. Um, so the pipe is nice and tight and then you remove the end stop because then that allows you to have the perfect distance to make a nice flange. Now there's two types of flange. I like saying the word flange. There's two types. Now they do two different things. As you can kind of see, um, one face, hold it, 45 degrees, yeah, there we go. So you can see they're slightly different. You wanna have a little punch, little, uh, little, little bit of lube. Little bit of lube, little, bit of lube, little splash in the old grease. Should we do a, what should we do, a double over? Yeah, let's do the hard one. So got the grease. One dip. Little blob. Little dip because what you wanted to do is obviously have lubrication where it starts to flange over. So it is a handheld tool, but I quite like to do it in the vise, just. Yeah, you can do it handheld. Keeps it's just, it nice. It's just like trying to use two spanners. It's just a bit of a nightmare. So if you've got a vise, make sure you use it. It goes in a little bit of the way and then it kind of goes harder, doesn't it? Yep, so it's, it's a little bit stiff. You definitely got a bit of a resistance there. 
wait until it goes all the way, which we are. Flip it over and then loosen it away. And then that is giving you your first flange. Now that will be used for use with a, a male yep. threaded one to go into a fitting. And then if you were to use it the other way round, then you would need to do this second step. So if we give this a wipe, I've got a cloth here, get your- Here we go. Get your grease off, you've done it already. Happy days, look. Uh, hold it back a further, there you go. Perfect, look at that. Oh. And then if you wanted to do a flare, so it flares out, you do the double first. So obviously you wouldn't have to take it out at all to start with. Put your end stop back in. But the one you've done just up to it, nip it up again. Take your end stop out. Another dob of the old grease. Bit of the lube. Make sure you get the right end now, because this is the other one. So this is the flared end. So it's basically gonna sort of punch a Y into it. So it Back pushes in. the middle in, which then flares the outside outwards, which you shall see in a moment. So this is used, this end is used for when you put a nut over it and you're basically winding it into something like a brake flexi or into a male fitting. And hopefully we have a textbook flare. Now we've only been doing this for basically a day. <laughs> so we're by no means professionals. But it gives you, hold it, yeah, there you go, look at that. Oh, beautiful. Lovely. So you now I've only got to do another 12 of them, basically. Yeah, but that went quite <laughs> nice, I think. And that was quite easy. Again, the tool was only sort of 10 to 15 quid off of eBay, Amazon, your local motor factors, anything like that. We could probably nick someone off someone you know who likes mucking around with cars. Um, and that's the flaring part. Now, should we move on to some bending? Because that was probably yeah. more fun. Um, let's move on to the let's bendy bendy. Let's just put all this away so we know we don't lose any of it. I would just like to take a moment to thank this week's sponsor. Mofast, who provide custom made and carbon fiber parts for sports and kit cars. Let's get it on the wall. If you'd like to find out more, we'll put all their details down in the description, along with any discount codes for any of the people seen on here. And just a quick flash, because we haven't fitted them yet, some snazzy carbon cycle arches for our kit car. Little sneak preview there, I like it, like it. Now, back to the video. Let's move on to doing some bending. Now, you could want any kind of radius. Now here, just to give you an idea of some of the bends that we have, um, this is 180 degrees. Then it goes down into a 90, a 90, a 90, about a 70. Yep. And then a little sort of 30, 30. On this side, you've got 90, 45, you've got 70. You've got a double here. set there. Yeah, you've got all sorts. Yeah. So, Bending is a little bit more of a faff, um, but with this tool, it also gives you a guide as to roughly how far you do. Now, little tips, because this video is gonna be full of little tips. We got a scrap piece of pipe, started with the end at the end of the guide, and then we pulled a 90, because that's probably the most common one you'll do the most of. So with making sure that that was at the end, pull a 90, then you know that that is the distance you need to make a 90. So if you have a piece of pipe like this and you've got your flared end and you know that's in the right place but you need it to turn here, you can hold this up and then you need you know exactly where to mark it so that when you put it into your, um, your hand bender that you know exactly where it's going to turn. Now that's, so that will save you at least an hour of getting it wrong. So let's say this pipe needs to go on this brake line fitting Obviously, it's should, a, should do the other side. Or this side. The camera won't, probably won't pick it up. It's 180 degrees. So yeah. with that, you want that. You want it straight away, and you want it as tight as possible. So, so this is hard. This is where we struggled a little bit because see. there's only there's like a minimum distance of where it can go into this before it can turn. So sometimes you need to pull the bend and then cut it back. Now cutting wise, where's our cutting wheel, Rob? Oh, I see. So. This cutting wheel is only a few quid offline. You can buy them from any, any plumbing shop or anything like that. There's your 180 look. And this has a distance, like it can only cut so far because if you look, see here, there's, there's your 90, but the cutter won't go sort of any further than where it stops being straight. So you are limited onto how you do it. 
But there, yeah, there you go. So look, we've got a 90-ish, we've got 180, and that was effortless. There's no dent on the inside of the pipe. Um, this there's no kink this one was bent by hand and as you can see it's all damaged in the center here uh, which is then unusable because you've, you've compromised the sort of the thickness of the internal of the pipe so kind of pointless um, but definitely how much do you reckon that was tenner yeah quid? I think it's like 13 pound off screw fix okay so, so 13 quid a fiver and then another 10 or 15 quid so probably 30 quid's worth of tools non-branded tools yeah, just from, from the internet. Not... because to be honest i mean this you can you can bend another 90 in it yourself by hand it's not impossible but it just doesn't look as good the the radius is a bit tighter it, it's just a nicer bend on the on the yeah. hand bender yeah definitely so that's 30 quid's worth of tools now the materials are supplied by mk yep so they'll give you a nice roll of copper which we have over here now like we said We've opted for copper nickel because it's a little bit stronger and underneath the car, if stones are going to be hitting it, you don't really want to compromise your braking system. Now, loads of car manufacturers use copper, loads of car manufacturers use copper nickel. So it's just kind of a toss up between what you want to do. This comes for free or you can get them to take the price of this off and buy some of this was like 18 quid for a roll. 18 quid for enough to do the whole enough car. The whole so so um, now we have a couple of tips at the time of doing this the manual gave us some figures and we we cut them all off and when we come to do them they fell a little bit short some of them so what we'd recommend doing is just getting a bit of string a bit of tape yep. something get a rough idea of your bends and yeah your line. you've got in the in the brochure brochure in, in the, the manual brochure. in the brochure in the manual there is pictures on where it should go the kind of angles it should look like and all that kind of stuff um so you get an idea of roughly where it needs to go so that's what it gives you. It gives you a table of all the different sizes. Now we've written on it because one of them is wrong, but um, actually three or four of them are wrong, but they are gonna be updating that. So hopefully when you do it, they'll be perfectly fine. Um, but we did notice that a couple of them were slightly off. So if you'd have run some um, string or some line or something, you'd have seen roughly or made it a bit longer and then put the ends on it afterwards, you'd have been in a better position than we were to start yeah. with. So we'd already had a bit of a play with some of this. Um, so we've got most of the lines in. What I'll do is I'll get onto the GoPro wherever I put it, over there, no. I actually don't know you. will find it in a minute. I think you lost it, mate. Oh, sir. Um, so we'll jump on the GoPro and I'll show you around what some of what we've done. Now, um, clip spacings, the maximum was 250, wasn't it? Yeah, 250 mil. No pipe cable or anything like that can be more than 250 mil apart from the clips or fixings or where they get mounted into some sort of union, which is bolted down, it's fixed. Um, so you just need to make sure your clip spacings are right. Chuck us up the GoPro and I'll, I'll start giving them a walk around while we're chatting. Um, fitting the pedals was reasonably hard because it's fiddly, I'll show you in a minute. So, so basically that's your, where it's bolted in and then you've got a couple of fixings, one at the bottom there, one there, and then that's obviously fixed in and you've got all your pipe work, fix, fixing, fixing, fixing. And this is the pedal box. Now, it doesn't look too bad from the outside, that's easy. But the problem relies is when you come into here, because it's a pedal box, you only have this distance here now, which you can see is about four fingers. So to get your hand in with a spanner or a tool, and then you're working against behind this, because again, it's a box. You're trying to get this nut up here, which I can just about get two fingers on, let alone to try and push it through, get a tool on and all that stuff. You also have to make some um, alterations to this and get it nutted on right and drill a split pin in and all sorts of bits and bobs like that. So that is a bit fiddly. It is fully doable, nothing's an issue, but it is, tight for room. You also need to make sure to get your sticker on for IVA requirements. Um, Rob's just gonna wind in some reservoirs now. And then you also have to make sure that you cover it, as said in the manual, with some split ducting, um, just to stop it from damage should the prop flick off anything or anything like that. Or maybe when you're installing the prop or whatever, you'd want it to bang. Um, and then we've got our fuel lines as well. We did our fuel lines at the same time, just because if you're gonna be drilling and some of them actually go together, like along the bottom here, you've got the, the braking fuel lines. Now they need to kind of stay out the middle. I don't know how I'm gonna show you this best, probably from down here. The cable tie is just holding it onto the bench, so don't worry about that. But as you see, they're not, nothing's in the middle. The only time it comes through is here, at the front here, there's a little bit at the bottom there 
but we're going to be cutting that off and it goes underneath here um, for the fuel. Was it the return, the bottom one, isn't it? The bottom one is the return, yes. Yes, yeah, so we've got our fuel filter fitted here. Now we just needed to mount, um, drill two holes. It, again, everything it shows you in the manual, there is pictures. Um, you just need to make sure when you're doing for IVA purposes, any nuts um, and bolts and stuff are trimmed down, just so there's only a couple of threads showing. Not like this one, this one needs to be cut down. You don't want to have loads of threads hanging out. Nylocks where possible. Um, and we've got everything ready. Now we've got our rear brake pipes in. Flexies all in ready. Again, nice clip spacings. Try and get it all. We've tried to just keep them the same distance each time into our union, which then goes down and back towards the front again. So pipe work wise, it's not actually too bad. This is what I mean about all the different radiuses. So you see here, you've got a 180 down into a 90, 90, 90, 90-ish into a little, little set there. This side, much the same just to try and keep it out of the way of everything, because you can imagine here is going to be the engine, the gearbox and all that kind of stuff. So you've got to try and keep it out the outside. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's not actually that bad a job, but the problem we found was, what do you reckon we spent on it now, Rob? I reckon at least seven, eight hours. So we've done seven or eight hours. Now, if you factor into the fact that we're 200 quid now, no, um, <laughs> <laughs> obviously this is, we, we, we know how long this kit's gonna take. We spent two days Probably about four hours ish a day yeah. um, doing it. Let's get Rob in the camera there. Okay. So we've spent about yeah four hours twice. Yeah. So eight hours, and we've also used an extra roll of um, copper, copper nickel because yeah. we fudged it up a couple of times. Our fault and the manual's fault. Yeah. Um, but we've spent about eight hours. We spent thirty quid on tools. We won't include the extra copper nickel. No. Um, so. And how much did MK charge to fit? I think it's about hundred pound. About a hundred quid and to do the brake, that's brake and fuel. And lines. fuel, pedal box. And fit the pedal box. Now I think that's great value for money. <laughs> be honest, right? <laughs> I reckon it's probably unless you want to do absolutely everything yourself, I would recommend getting them to do your yeah. brake and fuel lines because 100 percent we have literally spent two of our days that we would use to be building just yeah. doing that. It's been good to do it. But for it's that sort really of money... It's really frustrating though, isn't it? It is. It is and if frustrating. You show, because basically we're copying the photos of how they do it. Yeah. And if you can pay 100 quid and it's already done, and then literally your first job will be bolting Putting the, the floor, floor pan, pan on. on. And then after that, you're on to starting to put starting to put your, your front suspension, your rear suspension, and yeah. your diff in and all that kind of stuff. So it's definitely something to consider. If you, like I said, if you want to do everything, start to finish, complete build... Brilliant. Buy the tools. You've got the tools forever then. You can always do it, remake your stuff in the future if you yeah, ever if you need ever to do have a problem, you can redo it. Um, if you're a little bit unsure about brake lines and fittings and flaring and all that kind of stuff, it's well worth the hundred quid. No arguments. Just get it done. Especially if you're spending 12 or 13,000 pounds, an extra hundred quid to save you a load of mucking about is probably well worth spending. I'm not going to lie to yeah, you. Yeah, definitely. Um, Especially because, I mean, bending pipes, to get it neat is so fiddly because it takes some finessing, doesn't it? I think there's a few swear words involved, <laughs> but uh, we got there yeah, in the we, end. We, we stopped filming for a little while just to uh, just to get the stuff done because we were filming and we had an hour's clip that was just us swearing at each other and the pipe and cutting new pieces of pipe. And going short and then long <laughs> and then bending it the wrong way and then also putting <laughs> the wrong flange on. So oh, yeah. yeah, we put the wrong flange on, cut it. Put the flange on, it was too short. Put the wrong end on. Put, put Ah, one tip. If oh. you are going to do them, when you put a flange <laughs> on, make sure you've got the male or female. The right way around, yeah. And you've got it on there. Yeah. I've done two flanges and was like, oh yeah, I ain't got them on. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, uh, if, yeah, if you want to do it yourself and you want to do everything, definitely do it. It's great fun. Uh, maybe you don't have anyone else helping you so you can just sit here and swear on your own um, rather than at someone else. Um, or just get him to fit it yourselves. I mean, you get them to fit it for the 100 quid. Well worth it. Well worth it. Um, if you've enjoyed watching us muck around and show you about, there's going to be obviously plenty more of these, so don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. That really helps the channel. We appreciate that. Um, and also, don't forget, if you haven't subscribed, subscribe if you'd like to. Not going to make you. And if you tap that bell 